Hey guys, today we're going to build an MCP server in TypeScript. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. It's been getting a lot of hype recently, for good reason. MCP is an open standard protocol that connects AI models to external tools and data sources. It lets AI agents interact with things like APIs, databases, file systems, and helps you fetch data or even perform actions on your behalf. It can also dynamically string actions together through the context of your conversation. To show you how powerful this can be, I'll walk you through building a simple MCP server that fetches the NASA image of the day. What's really cool is that even the date for the image will be pulled dynamically using another MCP tool. So it's not just a hard-coded behavior, it's coordinated contextual action through MCP. I don't think I've shared this on the channel, but I work at a company called WorkOS, which is an enterprise infrastructure startup. And we recently hosted an event called MCP Night at the San Francisco Exploratorium. It's a really fun event. I actually got some footage of it and it brought together a bunch of engineers from different companies to share demos and real life use cases for MCP. Our team built a site where users could order free merch for the event through an AI agent. We used AuthKit, which is one of WorkOS's products for authentication, so only logged in users could place orders. It's a simple way to show how AI can interact with real systems. That got me interested in MCP and how it can make AI apps better. So today I'm going to walk you through how to make your own MCP server. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is hop into Cursor. I'm using Cursor as my IDE here because it has great autocomplete features, but you can also use it to integrate an MCP server. Also happy to do a video on Cursor if you guys are interested. So inside of this project, I'm going to create a new file called this one um, package.json. And then we'll create another folder called source, SRC for source. Inside of source, we'll create one more file called index.ts. This will be our TypeScript file, and we'll write some code in here to install dependencies and then also um, transpile this into JavaScript so that our MCP server can run in cursor. I'm also going to create one more file, and this will be for the tsconfig.json. Let's hop into a browser now, and I have a couple different tabs pulled up here. One is for this GitHub organization called Model Context Protocol. This is the official organization for MCP. And in this organization, we have a few different repositories for several different languages. These are SDKs that you can use to build your own MCP server. This SDK is a bit low level though, so I'm actually going to use something else called Mastra, which is a framework for building agents using TypeScript. This is a toolbox and it has a bunch of different features for building AI agents. We're going to be using a class called MCP Server. MCP Server is basically a class that helps us expose handlers for our MCP client to connect to. There are two different ways that you can spin up a MCP server. One is a local server, and the local service can make external API calls if you want. It runs locally, and your local agent can connect to the local service. There's also the SSE protocol, which is a remote protocol that you can run on a server and ask your agent to make external calls to that server. We're going to use the standard IO, which is the local server. There is a helper function called create tool. Create tool is what we're going to use to register our handlers, which the MCP client can connect to to fetch external data. So if we look at the docs here, you can see they have this weather info tool and it's used to fetch current weather information for a given city. Let's jump back into the editor and start implementing the server. First, I'll go into package.json, and I already have one created, so I'll paste it in here. I'll have a companion repo that I post along with this uh, video, so you'll be able to copy-paste this into your own project if you want. Name is NASA MCP Server. We have a couple of dependencies. One is Mastra, another is Axios, so we can make network requests. And finally, we'll use Zod for the uh, input schema. Then we have scripts. One is to build the TypeScript app into JavaScript so that we can run it from cursor to use our MCP server. Uh, this is what we'll be running in cursor. And then dev is just to compile the TypeScript app to make sure we don't have errors. We're going to tsconfig.json and fill this out as well. This config basically just tells TypeScript how to compile into JavaScript. I'm going to go back into the browser. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom on the MCP server, documentation, you can click on this link, which has an example MCP server. Let's just copy the MCP server that they have here and go back into cursor. We'll paste it and then we'll run through this here. So the first thing it's doing is importing MCP server from Mastra. Uh, they have this tool called the weather tool. So we're going to get rid of that because we'll implement our own tool. 
it creates a server class. The name of it is my MCP server. Let's change this so that it's NASA MCP server. Version is version one, and then we don't have any tools yet, so we'll remove this. And then we'll start the standard IO server, catch an error, and then console log the error if we have an error and exit the process. There's a couple missing dependencies here, so let's make sure we install those. Let's go into our terminal. We'll make sure we're in the correct directory, and then we'll run npm install. Great, that finished. Let's go into our project again and create a new file in our tools folder. Let's just call this NASA picture of day. We'll import a couple dependencies. One is the create tool handler from Astra. We'll also import Zod and Axios. I'll create a function called fetch NASA picture of day. This will be a handler that we'll call from our tool. It'll be an async function because it makes a network request. We're gonna take a few parameters here. One is the date, and then the other is an API key. They can also be undefined, which would fetch the latest picture of the day. And the API key is a string. I have this URL here, which will help us fetch the latest picture of the day. This is a public API that we can use. Um, you can get your API key from NASA, but you can also use a demo API key if you wanna just test it out. And then it should take a date as well. Since the date is optional, we'll just fix this code so that it only adds the date if the uh, date is passed in the API. Now let's just look at this API to see what it returns. So I'll copy this and I'll go into my browser. And the key that we're going to use to test this out is called the demo key. So you can see it returns a JSON object. Let's just pretty print it so that it's easier to read. There's a few different fields. We're going to be using the explanation field, the title, URL. We're going to wrap this in a try catch block so that we can handle errors. I'm adding a couple of TypeScript things here so that the TypeScript compiler doesn't complain. So if we get an instance of an error, we'll throw the error with the error message, and then otherwise we'll throw a generic error. I'm also going to change the response so that it's uh, formatted to something that we understand within our app. So I'll just convert some of the fields from the response data to this response object. So we'll be using the title, explanation, URL, and the date. We'll also add the copyright so that we can display it in the chat. And if it doesn't have a copyright, we'll just call it the public domain. Now we're going to create a master tool. We'll call this NASA picture of the day tool. So one is the name. We actually want to call this the ID. And we're going to use a plain text name so that it's easier for us to understand. I'm going to change the description here to fetch the NASA picture of the day for a given date. The input schema will have a date, which is a string, and the string is optional. It will add a description. And we'll want to tell um, the LLM exactly how to format the date. So in this case, it should be in uh, the year, month, day format. If we go back to the API, we can double check this. If you look at the date here, this is what the API is expecting. Finally, we'll want to create an execute function. So it looks like it already implemented it for us here, but I'm going to unwrap the data properly. So first thing we'll take is the context, and then we'll take a date. So a few issues here. One is that we're using too many curly braces, so I'll remove those. Uh, we also need to get a uh, NASA API key, and since we made this non-optional, we'll need to give it a default value. I'll just make a constant for this up top, and we'll call this uh, NASA API key. and we'll give it a default value. We'll take this and pass it into the function. And then the last thing we'll need to do as well is uh, register the tool. So we'll import it in our index.ts and make sure to register it on the server. And finally, let's make sure that this thing builds. So we'll go back to our terminal and we'll just run an npm run dev. No compiler errors, so that's great. All right, so let's get this integrated with cursor. So we're just going to run npm run build. This will transpile the TypeScript code to JavaScript. Looks like there was an error in my package.json, so let's go and fix that. 
my other uh, project had this extra directory, so I'm just going to remove that. We'll go back into our terminal and run the build command again. Great, looks like no errors, so we will make sure that this runs by running the npm start command. And looks like it does, so great. Now we're gonna go into our cursor settings. So you can get to the cursor settings if you go to cursor settings, uh, cursor settings. There should be a section here called MCP. This is where you can add a new MCP server to cursor and you'll be able to access it through the agent uh, chat right here. So let's click on add new MCP server. And then inside of here, we have a dictionary where we can add um, a key for our MCP server. So we'll just call this NASA API tools. And then this is actually just auto completed for me, which is great, but I'll walk through each key here. So first is the command that you'll run. And then the args are the args that you run for this command. So if you remember, if we look at our npm start command, uh, this is how we run the built server. And we're just pointing the node command to run this file, which is the absolute path to the file that we created through the build command. And then we're uh, specifying some environment variables. So this is the API key that I created. Uh, I actually just hard coded the, um, the default value here, but we can get rid of this. And then we can add some error handling here to make sure that we fix the TypeScript issue. So we'll just check if the API key doesn't exist and then we can throw an error. Otherwise we'll use that API key. And then we'll just make sure that this is exactly the same as what was configured in the MCP JSON which it looks like it is. All right, if everything's working correctly, you should see a green dot next to your MCP server. Underneath that, you'll see all the tools that are registered. We just have one, but if you had multiple, they'd all show up here. If this was red or yellow, you might have an issue with your server. Uh, so you can view the logs by going to view, output, and then clicking on MCP logs right here. Now we'll go back into chat and make sure the agent mode is selected. The cool thing about MCP is if you ask an LLM a question with a MCP server integrated, it will actually determine out of all the MCP servers that it has, which one it should use to, in order to answer your question, if it determines it needs to use an MCP server, which is what makes it so cool. So let's ask it a question. We'll say, hey, can you get today's NASA image of the day? So this should um, prompt the LLM to call the MCP server and it pops up with this window saying run tool. So we'll run that. Um, it gives us a title explanation of what it is as well as the image. So we'll copy the link, go into our browser and we'll take a look at this image. Pretty cool. Okay. And then there's one issue here. So the cursor, uh, cursor thinks that the date is actually, uh, in June of last year, which is incorrect. It was probably when the model was trained models, kind of like a snapshot in time of when it, the day it was trained. So the date might not always be correct. The cool thing though, is that we can actually make an MCP server to fetch the correct date. So let's just do that now, just to show how you can use a second tool to augment the response of this other tool. So uh, if we go back into the tools folder, create a new file, let's just say get current date, and then we can implement a tool to get the current date. So let's import the proper features and we'll create a tool. Cursor just auto completed this for us, which is great. We'll change the, the name of this and then we'll create an input schema, which doesn't expect any um, values. We'll make sure to import Zod and then we'll return the ISO string, but then let's format this so that um, the NASA tool can use it. So we can just split at the T symbol. If you look at an ISO string, it looks like this. The first part is the date, which is in the year, month, day format, and then the T separates the time. So we're just going to remove this. If you had a Z as well, it could have the time zone, but um, we'll just split at the T so we have that first date part. And then let's go back into our index.ts and import the tool. Then we'll register it. We'll build this. Okay, let's go back into our cursor settings. And we're just going to refresh this. Now you can see the get current date tool. So let's make sure that this works properly. I'm going to start a new chat. I'm going to say, say get yesterday's NASA image of the day. 
So first thing it's doing is getting the current date. If you expand this, you can see what parameters it takes. And then it will call that a picture of the day with the date. And there we go. So let's copy this, go back into our browser, and we can take a look. Awesome. All right, that's a quick look at how to build an MCP server in TypeScript. If you want me to cover more MCP content or AI content, let me know. There's a lot happening in this space. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing and leave a comment if there's a project you want me to cover next. I'll see you in the next video.